because what nature provides us with is a whole range of trees of all different sizes and shapes and, 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 and heights. And so there will always be some height of tree which if you were just a little bit taller, you could reach, and if you were a little bit shorter, you couldn't. And so there's a continuum of trees, a continuum of heights of leaves that it might be worth reaching, so that however tall you may already be, whether you're male or female, adult or juvenile, there still could be some circumstances in which you're better off being a bit taller. Now, I'm not necessarily in any case buying the view that reaching the tops of trees uh, is the reason why giraffes have such long necks. It could very well be. There could be other reasons. Uh, But whenever you come across an argument like that, and it's very familiar, you come across it with things like how could the wing, how could wings develop, um, there's always going to be some tree which is, just makes the difference between uh, getting a leaf and not, and not getting a leaf. No, no, we have to go quickly because there are lots, lots of questions, if you don't mind. Yes, please. Uh, in the, it's in the interest of a Western democracy that the head of state, of, uh, such as the current Prime Minister of Australia, openly holds irrational, absent, unsubstantiated uh, beliefs and in your person, in your opinion, is that is such a person of superstitious and religious disposition mentally competent or rational enough to hold a position of such a high public responsibility? This is going towards the Atheist Conference next week, isn't it? But uh, you open the book by talking about the Bishop of Oxford, with whom you have had very constructive relationships. Yes. I, I don't know what the actual views of the Prime Minister are, Um, there's, of course, a great range of of views that come under the general heading of of religion, and Robbins mentioned the the, the previous Bishop of Oxford, Richard Harris, who is pretty much not very different from us. I mean, he just sort of has a few religious beliefs left. Um, um, And on the other hand, um, you've got um, uh, Sarah Palin, whose whose beliefs are... are, um, just plain bonkers. Um, and I don't know where, where does the Prime Minister of Australia fit along that continuum? Just... I'm not sure, but I would just refer you to the book because that's what we're here to talk about. And if you look at page 212, you'll see several verses of which I'll read only two. All things dull and ugly, all creatures short and squat, all things rude and nasty, the Lord God made the lot. Each little snake that poisons, each little wasp that stings, he made their brutish venom, he made their horrid wings. All things sick and cancerous, all evil, great and small, all things foul and dangerous, the Lord God made them all. Is that actually a song that the Monty Python people sing? Uh, yes. Um, it's, it's the Monty Python version of All Things Bright and Beautiful. And it's, um, it's sung on one of their films by a a group of cherubic choir boys. It's really, very, very nicely done. I think it's a little bit unfair, I mean, but I, I think I haven't really answered the question. Yes, 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 yes you have. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, would, I would very much like to see heads of state who uh, hold uh, um, rational views, and so I, I was not a supporter of George Bush, and I was not a supporter of Tony Blair. Um, but um, I think it would be rather hard to... I certainly wouldn't wish to legislate against, um, against heads of state having religious beliefs. Well, you couldn't, um, you couldn't run for office in the United States if you said you no, were you, agnostic no, you, atheist. No, you couldn't, no. You no couldn't. hope, no hope. Um, but getting back to all things dull and ugly, um, it, it's a lovely song, and it makes the point that, that, that God didn't only make things bright and beautiful, he must have made the, the, the venomous... Um, Eastern groin gropers and things like that. Um, is that a real... Yeah, we've got a big audience here. I, I'm fascinated by this. Bill Bryson, in his book on Australia, which I'm now reading, um, talks about a poisonous snake called the Eastern groin groper. <laughs> That's a bloke. He's, he's having us on. He's having us on, isn't he? What? Can anybody here vouch for the Eastern groin groper? Have we got another question over that side? Yes, please. Yes, we do. Uh, Neil Byrne. Uh, What I uh, wanted to ask, in campaigning for rational thinking, in in your campaigning for evolutionary science, there's a perception, perhaps, that you expect 
someone who 